Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Ad Inventor. I've recently been focusing a lot more on 3D printing. And a struggle that I've always had with 3D printing is that I want it to be useful prints, something that I can solve a real world problem with. The figurine and the little trinket and toys, they're fine and they're fun too. They make great gifts, but to be able to solve real world problems is what actually like truly interests me for 3D printing. But before we dive into today's topic, you need a little bit of a backstory. I recently came across a YouTuber called Skyntific who's building a seven degree of freedom robotic arm using extensive 3D printing, which really inspired me. I highly recommend you check out his video. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Needless to say, I started backing him on Patreon and got access to the design files and started printing some of the parts out myself. After some calibration and some slight modifications. A lot of the prints are coming out really nice. Here's a example of two bevel gears for like the output shaft of the robotic arm. I had recently acquired a kid size four wheeler ATV quad, whatever you may call, might call it, uh, which I got by trading my neighbor an old canoe that I had never used it. And some people question who got the better deal out of it, but since I never used the canoe, the four-wheeler was way more useful to me than the canoe ever was. My only worry with it now though, is that it still doesn't have a lot of power being it's just a kid-sized four-wheeler. And so hauling a full-size adult such as myself is a little bit problematic for it. It gets up going and it gets decent speed once it gets going, but my worry is that with my weight if I was to ride it regularly that I would quickly burn out the clutch and belt that are driving it. My thought is if I gear down the four-wheeler it should be able to haul more weight more easily and so the first place I looked was to change the sprocket and chain assembly to try and gear it down and while I do did have some spare sprockets that probably would have fit on there, they did not match the same sort of spline fitting that the axle had on it. And so without having to do some serious grinding and metal cutting and welding, uh, I figured I'd look somewhere else. And that's where today begins. I'd recently printed the planetary gear assembly that Skyntific has for his robotic arm. And this is from the motor drive to part of the arm's movement. And you can check it out in one of his videos. But this planetary gear assembly gives you about a five to one gear down ratio. And I think if I scaled up this design big enough, I can put it on the axle of the four wheeler and essentially gear that down to get more torque, less speed and be able to haul an adult a lot more easily. But before I start 3D printing a gear assembly, the question we really need to answer now though, is will 3D printed plastic parts be able to withstand being in a drivetrain of a four-wheeler? To help answer this question, I figured I'd start by simply 3D printing a replacement hub and seeing how well that held up. And here it is. Compare that to the metal hub that came off of this four-wheeler. You'll notice a few key differences. One is it doesn't taper down in the back. That's because I figured I'm gonna need all the strength of extra plastic here versus the metal, which can arguably take a reasonable size load. I also didn't include any sort of threaded nut on the back of this print. That's because I'm gonna be using these bolts, which are longer than the original ones, which just went right back into to the back of the hub plate. These ones will instead go all the way through the plastic part and the front wheel, and then I'll just bolt it on. To design this, I borrowed a technique from Tom Stanton's YouTube channel, where he takes pictures of 
things he needs to model or model around and then traces them out. I'm still learning how to use Fusion 360, but I'm pretty handy in Affinity Designer, which is a vector editing tool. So the first thing I did was I imported that picture and traced it using vectors. Before long, I had a 2D SVG trace of the hub, which I then was able to import into Fusion 360 and easily extrude into a part. I then printed a test piece just to check the fit and make sure that everything was lining up fine. I had to make a few adjustments. I had moved the bolts in and I realized that I don't actually need these tapered ends like the original hub assembly. So I adjusted the holes, extended the tips out to hopefully add a little bit extra strength. And then I printed a full version. This full version is roughly the same height, a little less as the full hub assembly. And the reason for that is, is the inside of this has all those splines. I don't know if you can see it from the video, but it has a bunch of splines on the inside that fit around the axle. And this part, I wanted to try and get as much the same amount of splines as possible and have it be as strong of a part as possible. So huge block. All of this goes together. Onto the wheeler tire like this. There. Here's what the outer side of the hub looks like. I have the bolts extending outwards just so it'll be easier for me to tighten and put thread lock on. Because unlike the metal hub, I do want to put some thread lock on there because in case the plastic part crushes, it should still stay on. Here's the back side. This side faces in towards the wheeler. So you see, I haven't, I haven't even really tightened this down yet, but it's a good snug fit. If this test works, then I'll move on to phase two of printing a larger planetary assembly that all fits inside this wheel well. I'll scale up this piece so that it'll fit inside here and then connect to the axle. Of course, I'm gonna to need to buy bearings that'll fit everything because I definitely won't want to run plastic on plastic for this. Before we put this new hub assembly onto the four-wheeler, I'm now gonna apply a little bit of thread locker to these bolts so that the nuts don't loosen up. Normally, you wouldn't have to apply this to a regular steel hub. This is PLA plastic, but I'm gonna try to not apply a lot of thread locker, not enough to get everywhere. But then again, this is not a permanent hub. This is just a test piece. There, with that snug, now let's get it onto this axle. As you can see on the old axle, there's this little bit of this pipe piece that's fitted there. I might remove that later when I'm putting together the planetary assembly. The old hub slipped onto the spline like that and the spline teeth held it in place. Then this washer, the wheel would go on over that and be bolted on to the hub assembly. Then the washer would go on over that, holding the hub on, and then this nut, final nut piece, and then a cotter pin would go through that just so that the nut doesn't get loose enough to fall off. Now let's see if this can fit on there. It's almost all the way back. I'm not gonna hit it with anything because I'm worried I'll knock it off this post, but it's far enough in that I can actually slip this washer over and then put this nut on, and then I can tighten it down with a wrench and that'll force it back further. The dog is not dead by the way, she's just hot as well.
ratcheting this on slowly, it is pushing the whole hub assembly back further. And now it's reached the end. It is tight. I'm gonna hit this quick with an impact wrench. Just because impact wrenches are fun, and it's a lot easier to ensure that it's tight that way, especially while it is on this four x four. Just like that. Now, before we take this for a test run, I am gonna put a cotter pin through this, just because while I'm not worried about it coming loose, I like the idea of having a cotter pin in there. We do have a case of steel cotter pins. Came from a kit. This was actually going to be thrown away because they were cleaning out a back room and the boss didn't want them anymore. So I took them home. And look at that, fits perfect. A brand new 3.30 seconds by one inch cotter pin. Let's pull this off the stand, see if it even supports the wheeler weight. So far, that's looking very promising. I'm not gonna ride it tonight because it's already dark out and I wanna get some footage of this. But I'm gonna say, as long as our thread locker doesn't leach into the plastic, make it super brittle and cause the whole thing to fall apart, I think it'll do the job just perfectly. Very, very excited about this. I don't necessarily think the helmet is going to be completely necessary. If the rear wheel comes off and I end up falling onto the ground, I'm going to be glad that it's there. This might, this might muffle the microphone a bit, so you're going to have to bear with me. Test hub drive number one. Taking a look at the hub after the first test drive, and I see no signs of wear or wiggle or cracking. It's looking really good. Very happy with it. I would say that this test passed. So now you might be saying to yourself, okay, yeah, it can do roads just fine, but what about off-roading? Can it handle that? We're about to find out.
And now we have part failure. If you can see in here, we've got some daylight showing out through there. Which leads to interesting results. I can now burn out with the four-wheeler. Let's pull it back and see. Can you see the wobble? After beating on it a little bit more, after it's done, let's take a closer look. Now as you can see, It looks like the spline pieces, for the most part, still aren't intact and on there. It's just been uh, tearing into the support material. We've destroyed the plastic hub. Let's pull it off and check out what all damage has been done. All right, that was easy. Let's get our brand new cotter pin out. Our washer seems to be a little bit stuck. Now let's see if we can get this last plastic piece off. No, I just want to cut through the plastic on this. Don't want to actually damage the spline. Got it. Back in the office and reviewing the damage done. I want to note that the spline is looking awesome. Notice how there's the white ends of the tips here that you can see and then dirt in between. It did not strip this out at all. The axle was not free spinning on the plastic. Besides the areas where I cut it off, this spline was doing great. This hub also, where the lugs were in, holding the wheel on, solid. Everything is looking awesome there. Oh, we do have some cracking on this side. It looks like it cracked through. This was printed with PLA with 20% infill. Something special to note though is that I added a perimeter of six to this. So six extrusion lines in is solid plastic for every area where there's a perimeter. That includes the spline as well, which I think is a testament to how well this held up. Notice how thick that is? That's about the six perimeters. Where it broke off was essentially where the 20% infill began. And then once it broke, it just continued to do damage. If you look in here, it does not look like 20% infill. And the reason for that is, if I can get a good focus on it. Yeah, see that? The reason for that, I believe, is the 20% infill that was there just got compressed and squished and heated and pressed off to the side and ended up filling this into like this really kind of squished, combed over. It's a little bit flaky, but it's all compressed out. I think if I printed this entire hub block with 100% infill, we wouldn't see this same failure again. We might see cracking like this, but I suspect that this cracking occurred after the damage that was done. And you, you also might be wondering, when did this damage occur? Like what caused the part to fail? I didn't get it on video, but there was a big dirt mound that I hit pretty hard coming off of a road. And while it didn't like send me into the air, it did cause a lot of the weight to hit really hard on the back axle after going over this pretty aggressive bump. And I think when that happened, it potentially broke enough of the infill 
that it caused the part to just start rotating inside. And once that started happening, it was just cascade failure to the hub completely just disintegrating. So what are the next steps? I might start 3D printing out some of the parts, particularly things like this, I would then print in 100% infill so it's as sturdy as possible. I don't wanna have a similar kind of failure happen, especially with pieces that are designed to be smaller. Then once I get those pieces printed, we'll review them for their strength and see how well they all fit together in the assembly, especially being 100% infill. If things look good from there, I'll source some bearings, get those in place. I'll source bolts, see what bolt sizes we're gonna need to go through and a hub fitting plate so that the wheel can mount to it and then take it from there. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I really enjoyed making it. And if you wanna see more videos like this or want to see a follow-up on the planetary gear assembly, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below. Also, if you haven't already, go check out Tom Stanton's and Scientific's YouTube channel. They've taught me a ton of things that have helped make all of this possible. I'll put a link to their channels in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.